Hey Dollhouse people, Whitney Labrie here. And now that we're done with the pond, it's time to move on to the patio and walkways. I really need something to put my barbecue pit and pergola on. So I'm gonna be using an egg carton material today. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do is paint the entire base, this really bright apple tart green, which is gonna feel very bright to you, very bright on camera. But I chose this green so that it'll be easier for us to see the whole rest of the project while we kind of go through it. So I'm gonna clean it up, clean up this whole space, start fresh, and of course paint it this really bright green color, which is actually a really fun color. All right, and now that it's dry, you can see I'm gonna, you know, redo all of this whole section here. Now what I wanna do is take my egg carton here and I'm gonna break it down into small pieces that are like stone sized pieces. And usually I use this portion to feed the compost pile, but we're gonna use it today for this very special miniature project. What I like about the texture of the egg carton is that it is actually very stone-like already. You just have to make sure that you use the side to the outside because the inside actually kind of almost looks like fingerprints. It has a very different look to it. So make sure as you're laying them out, when you glue it down, right now I'm not gluing, that you're definitely using the stone side, let's say. And, you know, some people might find tearing this apart therapeutic. I kind of found it a little bit tedious, but it gave me an opportunity to kind of watch my CSI shows while I broke down the egg carton. And then if you remember this from my other videos where I made the pizza oven slash barbecue pit, this is actually what I'm going to be using for this section and the whole reason why, of course, I'm building this area. Uh, if you're interested in how I built that and want to know more, I've put the video link down below, but you can also find it in my playlist. It was a Father's Day special that I did um, I think over a year and a half ago now. So right now I'm just placing it where I'm gonna have it. Now, I know it's facing inward and it's really hard to see all the cool detail for the inside. The reason that it's that way is because I initially had built this to go in the backyard before I came up with doing the labyrinth garden. So that's where we're at and we're just gonna go with the flow. Now, this is a pergola also that I have that I wanna use out here. And I'm gonna put the barbecue pit underneath it. I did not make this pergola. I actually, I know you're not gonna be surprised when I tell you this, but I did find it at an estate sale. So I'm definitely gonna be using that and decorating it also. So I'm placing the items just so I can get a better sense of where I want them to be. And I'm gonna be making marks along the flooring. So I make sure that I build not only the stone patio, but the walkways and that I put everything in the right spot. And then along the house line there, I'm actually gonna have some flower beds also. So it'll be packed as usual with lots and lots of stuff. I will be removing the stones on the outside here because where the bright green is left over will actually be where I add grass in a separate video down the line. Same with the back here, I'm gonna remove those stones. I'm gonna use them to make a pathway that goes all the way to the front of the dollhouse and in front of the stair of the entry staircase in the front. And then I also wanna make a pathway that leads to the bridge that crosses over the pond that we installed a couple videos ago now. All right, so now you can see all the stones are in place and I kind of have a better idea of where I want everything. Once that's complete, I'm gonna actually start gluing everything down and I'm gonna be using my Mod Podge to do so. So I'm just gonna get messy with it. I'm just pouring it straight on my board and I'm just using my finger to kind of smear it around and place all the stones where I want them. And I'm just, it's just like a arts and crafts day in kindergarten over here. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, now that that's all glued down, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my, basically my gluing paintbrush here and just make sure that all the stones are pressed down, you know, pretty well. Some areas, you know, you might have a little lifting and that sort of thing, but what I'm gonna do is go in between all of the stones and then we're gonna be doing some tuft down, yeah, some, you know, some grounding. I'm not really worried too much about having too much lifting, but you just wanna make sure that you get the major areas of lifting, just really squish them down. Now I'm going to add vines to my pergola there and I'm using my twine to do so. If you want to know how I do this, I have another video where I make vines and I've linked that video in the description below. And I'm going to make vines because I want to add and make it look like it was stereo. 
So I bought these very inexpensive small filler plants at the local hobby store. And I also bought this moss here in, in purple. I didn't even know it came in purple, so I was pleasantly surprised to find that. They were both on clearance because they're considered summer plants and they were trying to get rid of them. So I got a really great deal. And then of course I've got my tufting and my spray glue. So first I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna just spray my glue right on the pergola. This is gonna help the vines not only stay in place, but it's also gonna act as an adhesive for the tufting. And the tufting I'm putting on to kind of add in some green leaves, make it look like you know stuff was in the air, maybe fell on top, and then also some additional green leaves on the vines themselves. And so I'm just gonna really shake that on. And I'm really not gonna do too much outside, which is also why I didn't put anything down underneath to catch the extra. It's just gonna be a little bit. I don't really want a lot. It's really mostly for filler. A little bit in this situation is gonna be okay. And you don't hear me say that very often, but yes, a little bit will work okay. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna spray it again and shake on a little bit more, I think, here and there, and then that should be good. Okay, now it's time to add the wisteria. So I just cut all of uh, the plants off. They're just a purple ending there. And then I have my moss right here in purple. And I'm just gonna place it up underneath and kind of hanging down. So I'm a big fan of wisteria. I love it so, so much. There's a restaurant near where I live that is kind of fancy. And they have this pergola with all this wisteria. And it's just gorgeous. And it just, you know, falls onto the tables. And, and it, I'm sure it's an absolute disaster for a restaurant to have to keep up with the cleanliness. But honestly, it has this very beautiful feel, which I'm kind of wanting to emulate by creating this pergola with this wisteria on there. And then that's what it looks like. And I'm actually gonna add some green leaves as well and some other fun stuff to the top. But you know what, I can't find it right now. So I'm gonna look for that and hopefully I'll find it by the end of this video and then go ahead and add that. All right, awesome. So now our stones, are they're all dry and now it's time to paint the stone. So I'm gonna go with my favorite stone colors. I've got buttermilk. I've got black, I've got a little cocoa color, and I've got a little bit of gray. It's called gray sky. All right, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my buttermilk color. And I'm dry brushing on this color here. I'm just gonna add a little bit. I'm not soaking up all the stone with the buttermilk. You can see I'm just slightly adding buttermilk here and there. I'm even missing a couple of the stones, you know, just to make it look a little bit more natural. And then once that is all complete, to be honest with you, I have to say, I almost just left it just as that. I kind of liked it, it's already which that's what's kind of fun about using this gray color and the egg carton is that it kind of already comes with this really pretty color. So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of my cocoa and I'm not gonna put as much of the cocoa on as I did the buttermilk. You can see here I'm just sporadically just kind of blotting it on here and there. It doesn't need to be everywhere. We're just adding some variation in color. All right, and then that's what you've got there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of black. Now, a lot of people get kind of freaked out with adding black because it just, for some reason, seems like such a permanent color. But listen, black is in nature everywhere that you look. And so you've gotta add it in it. It just, see how it's already like popping, all the colors are, it's just really making the stones pop. So I'm even adding really less black than I even did the cocoa. Again, not touching every single stone, but I'm definitely gonna add it, you know, throughout the entire stone patio and walkways. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking my gray sky, again, randomly popping it throughout the entire pavement, patio, walkway, and you know, it's even if you do have some areas where you feel like you did add a little too much black, this is a good time to kind of go over it with the gray and it'll kind of blend it right back in. All right, now you guys have seen me do this before. I did it with the Labyrinth Stone Garden as well, where I just take my Elmer's glue and I just put the glue between all of the stones. There's something pretty satisfying about doing this. You can use clear, honestly, but the white to me is better because you can see it. 
and now I'm just taking my tufting again you guys have seen me do this in the past and I'm just gonna sprinkle this throughout the entire patio area and all the walkways and then the front entryway as well all right and then it's real I really 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 saturated it I want as good coverage as I can get. And now what I'm gonna do is just walk away from this and let this dry. It will take a little time. And so that's where we're at so far. So I think right now, before we move on, we should just take a short break. And then once it's dry, I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm just gonna start brushing away all the extra tuft until I get this amazing look here. All right, it's really coming together. Now, there might be a few areas that I missed. See, I see some of that bright green coming through, which is also a really good reason why to do these bright colors underneath, because then you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my homemade scenic glue here, and I'm gonna start spraying over everything to kind of seal in what I've done. And I'm gonna really, really give it a good saturation. And then I'm gonna take this other color tough, it's like a lighter color, and I'm gonna fill in all those gaps. Okay, what are we looking at? Well, this is actually a floral bed that I designed a long time ago when I had my old dollhouse. And I just used basically clay and then small floral that I found at the local hobby store. And I just put them in there, let them dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in those gaps uh, with my floral so that I have these really nice flower beds that kind of garden areas. I have to say I'm ecstatic about this project and mainly because I built that pizza oven so long ago that I've just been so excited to finally put it where it goes. So I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. I am very thrilled to have brought it to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed, feel free to do so. I'd love to have you as a regular viewer. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Bye.